You're listening to WPCX 97 FM, 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 your Presbyterian College campus radio station. You know, every community has a dream. They have a vision. And with partnership of other entities that are statewide or regional or whatever it may be, um, we want to help as much as we can to realize those visions. Hello, Presbyterian College and the greater community of Clinton, South Carolina. My name is Lily Jaroszewski, and today you are listening to Lily in the Field a new podcast series where I venture into the community to speak with healthcare leaders regarding the issues concerning health and well-being in the state of South Carolina. The title of this first episode is Roaming Rural, the quest for community wellness in a small town. So as a public health minor at Presbyterian College and a future medical student, I really have been on a quest for over a year now to understand the social determinants of health in rural locations. This episode is really centered around rural health and the question, what makes a rural community healthy? I spoke with Paula Gutierrez, an employee at the South Carolina Office of Rural Health, She is the Rural Health Action Plan Lead Strategist, and she's been there since April of 2018. The South Carolina Office of Rural Health is a robust non-for-profit organization with over 40 employees, and their goal is commitment to rural health, focusing on preservation of all the things that make rural good while improving on the things that will ensure community health. Now, why does this matter to us? 30% of South Carolinians live in a rural location. So for PC students entering the workforce, this is excellent knowledge that will help us build upon what skills we're going to use in the workforce and in the communities that we're going to serve after graduation. Paula's understanding of rural is one of confidence, one of pride, It's evolved from there. It's become so much more than just talking to people about if and how they're following these action steps, but it's become more of who's who, who's doing what, and how can we connect them to each other to make sure that... Upholding the dignity of rural communities and the blueprint while improving upon the things that will ensure a better quality of life. Make their dreams come true. (laughs) Paula is on fire for rural health. I hope that you enjoy what she has to say regarding the topic and that it motivates you to go out and serve the greater South Carolina community. I'm excited to talk to Paula today. I think having Zoom makes it so much easier to talk to people that you wouldn't normally have the chance to meet. All right, it's recording now. We're with Paula today from the South Carolina Office of Rural Health. Thank you for joining us, Paula. Oh, thank you for the invitation, Lily. What specifically is your role at the South Carolina Office? So when I was brought on board in 2018, I was brought on as the Rural Health Action Plan lead strategist. And so the Rural Health Action Plan is a document that was carefully crafted, listening sessions, a steering committee, a task force, and it was a list of priorities and action steps on what would make rural South Carolina the best it could possibly be. And that's including... um, uh, resources and programs and projects and entities that are current that were already in place doing great work. Paula was entrusted um, with bringing attention sure to this perfectly crafted that. document and, and, that document and ensuring that steps were well. being taken and for to follow it. Um, involved in those action steps to capture um, data on how is it going, kind of like a pulse, uh, you know, every, you know, couple months or every year to see how Paula gives us the story of where she grew up. Do you think it's changed? Like, would you say that living in a rural area influenced your perspective on rural today and the communities that you work with? 
Absolutely. So I was born and raised in Greenville, South Carolina. And I think people listening now are like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Greenville? Greenville. 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 Right down the road in Greenville, South Carolina. You know, when I was little, there's at one point where I think people in Greenville were thinking, I need to get out of Greenville. Greenville in the 80s and 90s was probably not the most bustling place people aspired to live in. Now it is. And so I asked her, what are the key components to building a prosperous community? (laughs) <laughs> well, I think the number one is is leadership. Um, there must be a strong leadership that when uh, leadership leaves, that torch of that vision is carried over. You know, for instance, Greenville, I, I believe that, you know, the vision and, and kind of like the focal point is the river. That's one of the main um, components that an area needs to prosper and aside from leadership there's the infrastructure part if you don't have a good infrastructure then people don't want to move there absolutely absolutely would you say that um, having good infrastructure having that leadership attracts people to a community and then in can in junction with that kind of build up their healthcare system, build up their economy. Would you say those all go hand in hand? Yes. And I think it's important to break down what exactly is infrastructure. Water. You need to make sure we have clean water. What schools are there? Enough water. <laughs> Is there internet, the highways? Uh, a company is not going to want to build or buy up one of those... Um, Mini mall? Oh, what are they called? Warehouse? No, it's not a warehouse. Spec buildings. Spec building. So what are some natural resources and what are some um, infrastructure components in uh, rural areas that facilitate growth? And not only for someone and, I mean, a company to to come in and set up shop, but also for that community workforce. We discussed a bit about the textile history of South Carolina and its impact on economic and social structure. The research you've done, you've seen that there used to be a booming textile industry and a lot of those uh, companies um, had neighborhoods. They were mill villages and everyone lived near where they worked. And a lot of people came into a certain area because they had expertise in the textile industry. So that's not the case anymore. So what is it? And we look at different companies in different places within South Carolina. And there's a lot of manufacturing. There's farming. um, There's a lot of great um, industry here in South Carolina. Paula finds that a lot of it's centered around education. Paula finds that a very pertinent question is, can people be both educated and find a job in the place where they live? So how are we educating um, our rural communities? What tools are we giving them? And once we give them those tools, are they able to stay where they live? Or do they have to think about moving to one of the bigger cities that they can actually work in? I think we're quite a ways away from equity and opportunities like education and, and workforce. Rural areas she thinks a lot of this can start at a young age. And getting children exposed to STEAM curricula to be able to participate in, in this culture that, that is being cultivated in South Carolina around all of these different sectors. What else is important for social well-being of a community? Paula finds that a lot of it's centered around competition with um, the areas that are prosperous. Um, So let's say an organization has a grant opportunity. Smaller communities don't always receive the funding they seek out. They might not have those matching funds, and so they miss out on a lot of opportunities. And if you if you were able to look at different grant awards from no matter who, you could see that a lot of these awards, not all of them to be fair, but a lot of them go to areas that are closer to tourism. And you know, if we look at our um, hot spots in terms of areas that need some attention, let's say Dillon, Marlboro, Lee, Allendale, Bamberg, Barnwell, 
those are counties that need some special attention based on how they rank in health. And also when we look at tax incentives. Funding these small town projects will help improve their quality of life. So it was a culmination of data. I was so surprised to learn that lifespan expectancy differs by location in South Carolina. And I remember there's a poster showing the huge difference in longevity between some counties or even within a county. And let's say in like Richland County or Lexington, um, depending on the area, there could be almost a decade of a difference of how long you can live based on where you're located. Wow, that's incredible. So when you look at these health parameters, like when you're assessing the health of a rural area, what kind of parameters are you looking at? I really like the county health rankings and roadmaps, like social, behavioral, traditional health, as we know, chronic disease and how, how is your heart. She pays attention to commute time and also to employment. I pay more attention to commute time. That's one of the the factors that they list and how it affects your health. You know, did you finish high school? Do you have internet access? And it boils down to quality of life. You know, with my work, I like to think that it's if you have a job. So once you don't have a job, you have stress, you have anxiety, you could get depression, it could lead to behavioral health issues, substance abuse, your heart hypertension, diabetes, cancer, I don't know, like, there's so many effects that your mental health have on other parts of your body. What advice do you have for the younger generation entering the workforce? I think there's a role for anyone. Um, There's an opportunity to build new things in rural areas. You know, a lot of people are migrating from other parts of the country to South Carolina, even rural South Carolina. You know, many have the capacity to become an entrepreneur. You know, they sell their home. It's, um, you know, more expensive, let's say, in the north. And they can have the possibility to buy um, more land. And I feel that this is the time for the people who live here already to have those opportunities. What does the future look like for rural communities? Some will be amazing in terms of, you know, the the current residents will say, wow, I I have a place to go to on the weekend. I can go to the downtown fill in the blank and there's a pizza place and there's a coffee shop. Um, They have an event or like a band or whatever. I can see that. And I think that's the direction. We're going to see more of a revitalization of these downtowns. And so I think having, you know, these these revitalization efforts constructed and planned with the community involved and in mind, I think are, 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 that's that's what I envision, you know, you know, the revitalization of of downtowns. And um, I think more and more people are moving here and the metro area keeps growing I asked Paula for some of her final words regarding her message. Paula, um, any like last thoughts on like why rural health is important? Rural health is important because we're all connected. If rural is doing well, the whole state's doing well. It's like a domino effect, right? Um, If it's doing well, people won't have to leave and people can stay there and prosper. Same thing with rural. Some people move even because of health care. They don't have a doctor nearby, and so they sell their home in the in a rural area to move closer to a doctor because of whatever um, health care issue they may have. And that's not okay because that's their neighborhood. That's their community. And it's a stressor to move somewhere else that um, they don't want to be. So so the main reason rural health is important is because it's it's a rich resource. And it should be preserved, just like anything that we preserve in South Carolina, whether it's a a lake or a river or a a trail. That's no different. Rural is a gem that we have in our state, and it should be preserved and taken care of. And any sector has a role in that, whether it's healthcare, whether it's um, finance. (laughs) I mean, you name it. it. Everyone has a role in public health, rural health. It's it's all good.
Thank you so much to Paula Gutierrez and the South Carolina Office of Rural Health, a very robust and strong non-for-profit organization advocating for rural health in the state. Thank you, Paula, for inspiring us with your positivity regarding rural communities which need our support just as much as anything else we would preserve in South Carolina, in the words of Paula herself. We discussed the different components that make a community what it is. We all look forward to continuing education in these rural communities that will inspire the young generation to the revitalization of downtowns and encouragement of all things rural preserving the good while encouraging the new. Most importantly, we are all connected and by supporting one another, no matter what community one resides in, we will support the whole. If you're interested in learning more about studying public health at Presbyterian College, contact Dr. Ben Bailey, the minor director. If you're interested in participating in communication studies to make communication platforms such as this podcast, contact Dr. Philip Perdue. Should you be interested in learning more about the South Carolina Office of Rural Health, visit scorh.net and watch their video series, Power of Rural, on YouTube. If you want to hear more of Paula Gutierrez, you can listen to her on a recently uploaded podcast called Wheels Up KPH from Knox County in Ohio. Thank you to WPCX for including us on your broadcasting station. This is your host, Lily Jaroszewski, reporting from Presbyterian College. Thank you for joining us. So long for now. Until the next episode of Lily in the Field.